Hello and welcome. In this video, I will demonstrate how to output basic strings and variables to the screen using Python. This video assumes that you have successfully installed an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, that supports Python. In these videos, I will be using the Spider IDE. There are plenty of tutorials about Spider, so for now, just know that it's much like other applications. File, open, save, etc. What might be new is the run buttons and commands. I'll demonstrate these in just a second, but for now, just know that any IDE will have some version of run. A quick shout out to the book Python for Everyone. If you're looking for a place to get started, a used copy of Python for Everyone is a great starting point. The second and third editions are virtually identical for almost all of the chapters. Here we see some simple code. You can see that I've turned on the line numbers so that I can refer to line 3 or line 27 of the code. Just for fun, let's try to run this code. In the ribbon at the top of the page, I click the big green arrow, which will execute all of the code in my file. Down on the right, the results of running my code appear. Line 1 is just a simple comment. Comments are lines that are not read by the interpreter or the compiler. They are notes to self or notes to future programmers who may read the code. If you are a beginning programmer, I strongly recommend that you make liberal use of comments. Don't be afraid to add a comment for every line of code. Your goal is that by carefully naming variables and methods and by liberally using comments, your code should be self documenting. I skip line 2 just to make the code a little easier to read and to provide my eyes and brain with a break. On line 3, I am using the print function to tell the program to output the string hello world to the user's screen. As you can see, the method or function I want to use is the print function. Every function has parentheses, even if there is nothing between them. Often there are literal values such as a number or a string or expressions such as 2 plus 2 or a variable name. In each case these things are passed to the function which does something with these arguments. In this case we are telling the print function take the character string hello world and print it on the user's screen. The result is our first line of output from the program. The next line, line 5, creates a variable called fname and assigns the string value joe to it. On line 6, I create a variable called lname and assign the value hasley to it. On line 8, I use the print function to output the value of the fname variable to the screen. Notice that I'm using the print function, just like I did on line 3, but this time I'm sending a variable, fname, as an argument for the function, whereas before I sent a string of characters. The string of characters needed to be enclosed in parentheses. Notice what happens if I put the name of the variable into quotes, as I do on line 9. Now when I look at my output, it has output f name instead of the value of the variable name. On line 11, I use the print function to output the value of the l name variable to the screen. On line 13, I create a variable that I call full name. Notice that I am using camel case for my variable names and that all my variables start with a lowercase letter. The value of the full name variable is the value of the f name variable stuck to the value of the l name variable. When we stick two or more strings together, we call it concatenation. In this case, I am concatenating the values in the variables fname and lname and assigning the results to the full name variable. If you have not already read about concatenation in your textbook, I strongly suggest you pause the video and do so now. On line 15, I output the value of the variable full name using the print function. Notice that my output from line 15 puts the first name and last name directly next to one another with no space at all. On line 17, I concatenate f name and l name, but I add a space character between them. When I print the variable full name again on line 19, 
the output of the full name variable is fname and lname with a space in between them. Another way to concatenate two variables is to simply list the items separated by a comma, as we see at line 21. As you can see, when we separate the items by a comma, a space is automatically added. If we add a space, as you see in line 23, it doesn't make any difference. On line 25, we output first name, last name, and the last name again. This time, however, we are performing a function on the lname variable the last time we output it. Right now, go ahead and Google Python upper open parentheses close parentheses to see what the upper function does when it is appended to a variable name using a period. If you look at our output, you can probably guess what's happening. The last thing I want to do is create a new variable called distance. I'm going to assign it the product of the equation 5 times 5. Now I want to append the value of the distance variable to the string the distance to the park is. When I run this code, I get an error. Why? Well, the print function can only print string values, but the value in the distance variable is of the type integer. To fix this, I want to turn the number value into a string. So at line 31, I use the str function, the string function. Whatever number value I put into the str function will be turned into a string type. Now, since I'm concatenating a string to a string, this line of code will work. One last thing. I want to have a space between the colon and the 25. So I change my code to include a space between the colon and the closing quote. In this lesson, we learned how to create variables and assign string and number values to them. We learned how to concatenate strings. And we learned how to send output to the screen using the print function. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.